What did week eight in the NFL reveal to us? What was revealed about the Detroit Lions, about the Green Bay Packers, about the Pittsburgh Steelers? And what about our own lives? What do our lives reveal? Let's unpack it. Welcome to the Unpacking It podcast, where we unpack parallels, metaphors, and topics in sports that relate to life and faith. I'm Bryce Johnson in Charlotte, North Carolina, joined in studio today by my new friend, Brian Saylor. He's a pastor at Forest Hill Church here in Charlotte, and we have got a great topic for today's podcast as we are talking revealing what was revealed in the NFL and what is revealed in God's word and what do our lives reveal so a lot of a lot of different angles to this topic and excited to jump in be sure to check out our website it is newly designed redesigned so you can check out unpackingit.com If you haven't subscribed to our weekday email devotional, uh, make sure you do that as well on unpackingit.com. We send out a devotional Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then here on the podcast, we usually talk about Monday's devotional. So we have a conversation about that topic, uh, but encourage you to read those devotionals as well. And also, I want to thank our sponsor, Upward Sports. Be sure to visit upward.org slash unpack and find out how you can start a sports ministry at your church. And so Upward Sports will customize your sports outreach strategy to support your church budget and community needs, and they understand that one size doesn't fit all. And so now is the time to consider your sports for 2025. What do you want to do? How do you want to impact your church and community? And so plan ahead, schedule a call, and and, and make sure that you talk to Upward uh, so go to upward.org slash unpack. They've got many different sports options. Uh, they even have a, a new running option as well uh, to go along with soccer and basketball and flag football and, and cheerleading. So uh, be sure to check out upward.org slash unpack. All right, let's say hello to today's guest. He's a campus pastor at Forest Hill Church in Charlotte. He was previously a pastor in Florida He is a husband to Katie, dad to Isaiah and Malachi, and he is a Charlotte sports fan, a suffering Charlotte sports fan like myself. Brian, great to see you. How you doing, man? Man, it's a great time to be a sports fan in the month of October. (laughs) It's a tough time to be a sports fan if you're cheering for the Carolina Panthers, but I'm stoked to be on Unpacking It. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, we're we're glad to have you, And, and a couple weeks ago, we had Brian Goins on the show, and he said, hey you got to meet my friend Brian Saylor. Boom. We Shout get, out to BG. That's right. We love Brian, and uh, we got coffee. Here we are. And so uh, so excited to to talk about week eight in the NFL. And, and since we're both Panthers fans, we'll get this out of the way. Uh, Bryce Young, I call him Bruce Young uh, because I don't like to be associated. I, I like to be the only Bryce. We'll say that. Um, but, but Bruce Young goes out there, gets another chance against the Broncos. The Panthers lose badly again. What was revealed to you from the game against Denver? Yeah, so I have a take about the Panthers. What was revealed to me was nothing changed about how I view the Panthers in this game. I still have high hope for our future with Dave Canales, with Mm. Dan Morgan, because I believe they're building something. Mm. And this year was always going to be a wash. We got rid of Brian Burns. We got rid of Frankie Louvu. We've had the worst injury bug ever. But I feel like they're building a culture here. I'm excited about that culture. For the first time in the David Tepper era, I feel like we have some consistency in what we're trying to do. Mm. And so we're going to need a quarterback. That is the big question that every single terrible NFL team has. (laughs) Yes. But I have more optimism about the future than I've had in a while as a Panthers fan. Although, let's be honest, week to week, it is tough to turn on the TV and watch your team just struggle terribly. Heard a podcast today that called the Carolina Panthers, uh, I think Mike Lombardi was saying that 
that we are the worst team he's ever seen. Oh, come on. That's tough. Come on. I don't know about all that. That's that's a stretch. We we don't receive it. Panthers got into the end zone a couple times, so that was that yeah. was positive. But uh, yeah, what it revealed to me the the big takeaway, Xavier Leggett was a good draft pick and I think it points to the new regime being able to draft well. It gives me hope for the future that they can identify talent, go get that talent and to me, Xavier Leggett is legit. So I'm, I'm psyched about that. Big Xavier fan. And you're right. When I look at the team right now, like I just don't see a lot of franchise pieces. A lot of people that I can say, I have pulled for this guy forever. You think about 2015. We had oh. so many of those guys. Cam Newton, Greg Olson, Jonathan Stewart, all that, all those guys. Yes, amazing. So we don't have those pieces right now, but I feel like Leggett could be one of those pieces. He is legit. That's I'm right. stealing that. That's right. Absolutely. So so excited about that. Uh, but yeah, t- it's a, it's just a tough season overall. And so uh, that has been revealed since uh, since week one. So <laughs> that continues to be revealed. But as we look back at some of the, the matchups uh, from week eight, here are a couple other things that, that I think uh, was revealed. And so we'll start with the, the Buffalo Bills because they were this unique team coming in this year with you know, tons of success, but yet disappointment in the playoffs and they let a lot of guys go and, and you know, Stephon Diggs leaves. And it's like, all right, what's Buffalo going to be all about this year? And, and what will they do on defense? And what was revealed is their defense is getting better every week because I like Seattle's offense and they go out to Seattle. Sorry, Aaron. And, and our producer Aaron's a big Seahawks fan. And the Buffalo defense held them to 10 points. They couldn't run the ball. Charbonnet did okay, but, but Kenneth Walker was stopped which was frustrating from a fantasy perspective, but we'll talk fantasy on the Fantasy Football Fellowship podcast later. Um, But the Bills continue to play well on offense. James Cook runs the ball. Great for them. Of course, Josh Allen continues to be Josh Allen, but the key that was revealed is they've got a defense, and they are the best team in the AFC East. Forget about the Dolphins. Forget about the Jets. It is the Bills. So that was one thing revealed to me. What, what was another game or team that, that revealed something to you, Brian? Yeah, well, what was revealed to me was that Jameis Winston is the GOAT <laughs> at pregame and postgame speeches. So he had an incredible quote, an incredible interview with Amanda Balionis, where he dropped this epic line, unwavering faith, ultimate belief, dependence on the Lord. She asked him another question. He said the exact same thing. <laughs> Unwavering faith, ultimate belief, dependence on the Lord. It's good. Jameis has been in my life a long time because I'm uh, lived in Florida for the past 13 years. So with Florida State, with his time at Tampa Bay, a lot of people in my life have been pulling for him. And so I have often been sent clips of him <laughs> just dropping incredible speeches. And this man is going to be a pastor one day after he leaves the NFL he just has all of the tools that are needed to be an incredible preacher. But he pulled off an incredible win against the Ravens. This was huge. This was To me, this might be the story of the weekend. And it just revealed that he still got it. He still could throw the ball all over the field. And it, it also revealed how bad Deshaun Watson has been for this, this Browns team. And, and it revealed, wait. Why didn't they put Jameis in sooner? Why did it take an injury? And, of course, when you invest as much money as they have into Watson, that's why they kept him out there. But Winston's better. And, and he proved it in, in you know, one game. But this was against the Ravens, one of the hottest teams, that, probably the hottest team in the league, and you know, a team that had been putting up ridiculous points. And, and, and you know, they're still great. The, the, the Ravens aren't going anywhere. But for the Browns to do this with Jameis, it gives them a little bit of hope the rest of the way that they will at least be competitive. Uh, Cedric Tillman was very good as a wide receiver. You know, Nick Chubb continues to get back healthy. So it revealed that the the Browns aren't totally dead. Like there are, you know, a couple other teams in the league are. The, the, at least the Browns, you know, revealed that. So that was, that was big for them. Yeah, I stashed Nick Chubb on my fantasy football team. He's been on my IR spot. So I'm looking forward to hopefully <laughs> scoring some late season wins with him. But yeah, I think it also revealed that the Baltimore Ravens really have a defensive problem. Mm. Although they are leading the league in rushing, obviously Lamar Jackson is an incredible quarterback, and I believe he is at least in the top two to three as far as um, his MVP odds right now. But the Ravens, uh, the fifth worst in the league as far as points given up, and I believe also pretty low the last as far as passing yards given up. 
So it used to be that the Ravens were like the vaunted defense. Yes. They are struggling after uh, Mike McDonald went to Seattle. And that's going to be a problem in the playoffs. Like you said earlier, the Bills, the defense is coming on strong, and you cannot hide a bad defense in the postseason. That's a huge concern for the Ravens. Yeah, Ray Lewis isn't walking through that door. So they, they, got, they, got, some, they got some concerns there for sure. And speaking of defense, bad defenses, another thing that was revealed. You that, know it's coming. That we already knew, but it was revealed that the Bengals still have a bad defense and the Dallas Cowboys still have a bad defense. I watched the beginning of Sunday Night Football when they do the uh, – you know, the PFF rankings for all the players. I always love that. I always love to see how they're ranked, like, you know, 40 out of 50 defensive linemen, whatever, whatever the number is. But when Dallas showed their defensive players, they were horrendous. I mean, every guy, like one guy was 144 out of 144. I forget, I forget what position it was, but it was like, wow, this Dallas team is, this defense is really bad. Not to mention what they did on offense with Dak and the interceptions, but uh, the fumbles and everything else. But, uh, you know, the Bengals, they can't stop anyone. And, and so they gave up 37 to the Eagles. So the Eagles also revealed to me that they're coming on and they might have figured things out. So there were some concerns, you know, earlier in the season, guys in and out of the lineup injury wise. But when A.J. Brown's out there, Devonta Smith is out there and Saquon and, and Jalen Hurts are, are rocking and rolling. They're they're pretty unstoppable. So. Uh, and especially the, the Bengals defense isn't going to stop anybody. So Yeah, the Eagles, I think, were really struggling early in the season. Talks of firing Nick Sirianni. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it seems like they're on a little heater right now. Uh, what this game revealed to me was that Dak will have plenty of time to wedding plan in January. <laughs> Obviously, a couple weeks ago, proposed to his now fiance. But the Cowboys, three and four, bottom four in the NFC. And what's crazy is the ESPN preseason FPI, the football power index, had them as the sixth best team, 78% chance of making the playoffs, mm. and they are underperforming quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, they'll still win some games, but they just seem so disjointed. It's just like you just get this feeling when you watch the Cowboys. You're like, yeah, they're not clicking. And I felt that way a few weeks ago at the Eagles, but they're turning it around. So I don't know if the Cowboys can turn it around and start clicking and start rolling. But again, when I look at the defense and you realize, wait, they may not have enough talent on defense. And same with the Bengals. I don't know if they can, they can fix it. So it's one thing where, yeah, well, let's make some adjustments and, and you know, we'll get some guys back healthy and all that. I don't know. The Bengals and, and Cowboys are in, are in trouble. All right. The... Other game that was interesting, the Indianapolis Colts with Anthony Richardson as their quarterback. And, and Joe Flacco, gosh, I saw him a couple weeks ago on the Manny cast. He's a, he's, he's a character. I didn't know that Joe Flacco was as, as funny and interesting. as it's, it's almost like because he's so boring, he's interesting. But anyway, it was a great interview a couple weeks ago. So I, I, I kind of like Joe Flacco. I like what he did last year with Cleveland. I like what he did so far you know, this season with, with Indy when he was filling in for Anthony Richardson. But it was revealed on Sunday once again that Anthony Richardson is not ready to be the superstar that the Colts drafted him to be, that we maybe saw glimpses of last year in such a, a small sample size. But he doesn't have it. I mean, he, the numbers, are you kidding me? 10 of 32 passing. Now, a couple drops, we'll, we'll throw that in there. But still, that, that is not good. And then, you know, he's getting ripped by everyone for this, which is it's kind of fair. But he took a playoff because he was tired. This is the NFL, man. You're a franchise quarterback, so to speak, or allegedly. You can't be taking plays off. So this revealed a lot about him. And I started with Flacco because you got to go to Flacco. Because you're, the Colts are still somewhat alive in that division because – we already know it's been revealed the Jaguars aren't doing anything this year, and it, it's only getting worse now that all the wide receivers are injured. Uh, Houston now a little banged up, so it opens up a little bit of a door, and Tennessee is horrendous. So the Colts are still in the mix. So if, if Flacco's already shown, hey, I can win some games for you, you got to go to him. So that's what was real, revealed to me. Yeah, obviously Flacco had that incredible run last year, taking the Browns to the playoffs. I wrote down about Anthony Richardson that it really revealed that it's it's really hard to draft a winning quarterback in the NFL. And honestly, if you think about it, I think that quarterback is the hardest job on planet Earth, maybe besides president of the United States. 
<laughs> um, Bryce, I did a little research here. So there are 32 teams in the NFL. Hot take. <laughs> there are not 32 good quarterbacks. And over the past five years, we have had 16 quarterbacks drafted in the first round. Five of them have made have a playoff win. C.J. Stroud, Trevor Lawrence, Joe Burrow, Jordan Love, and Daniel Jones. Mm. 11 do not have a playoff win. So for you and I as Carolina fans, I know that oftentimes we can be looking to the NFL draft to hopefully solve for Bruce and uh, <laughs> solve for our future. But drafting in the NFL in the first round, it doesn't guarantee anything. And it's, it's a really hard thing to evaluate quarterback. Obviously, there's like Jaden Daniels. He crushed it this week. He is crushing it. But it's a hard thing to evaluate for talent, especially around the quarterback position. Yeah, absolutely. And it also is interesting, just based on even week eight, the former number one picks are doing pretty well overall, um, especially thinking, I mean, I know the Bucks lost, but Baker Mayfield is having a tremendous season, former number one pick. Trevor Lawrence, the Jags stink, but he played a little bit better on, on Sunday. So there's a number one pick. Joe Burrow, actually all these guys lost, but Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. So like these are your number one picks. And so then you start talking about, or even even Bruce Young, uh, number one pick. So we got all these number one picks. So it's like, what do we take away? What, what was revealed from these, these number one guys um, to go into your theory too? And I'm, I'm not exactly sure because I mentioned all those guys and they all lost, but some of them played a little bit better, Baker in particular. Um, because, at, because you talk about how hard it is to predict after that. Like, num number one pick is about the best chance you got because Caleb Williams, had, you know, he had, he had kind of a rough game, only 100-some yards passing. But, he looks like but, he has but, something. But he at least looks like, all right, yeah, we can we can keep going and build around him. Um, so, I said, yeah, anyway, I, I don't know what the what the reveal is, but y these number one guys are getting a chance. And Jameis Winston's another guy that, that jumped out. Sometimes it takes going to another team as well. Um, so that's that's intriguing. But speaking of... Caleb Williams, we got to talk about this game because this was the best game of the of the day. I was, this was dinner time in the Johnson household, and I was like, hey, I'm going to keep the TV on. It was on mute, and I had my eye. I look over, and it's like the final play, and then I lost it. I was like, Whoa, he scored! They scored! They got the hail mary! And so it was revealed that you still can win a game with a hail mary. And so good for Jaden Daniels. It was all. It also revealed how tough he is. I mean, you got Anthony Richardson taking you off the plate because he's tired, and Jaden Daniels is out there playing with with bruised ribs, playing till the end, the final play, baby, winning the game. I'm all in. I am on his bandwagon. I think most people are. That was awesome. Yeah, it's exciting if you're a Washington football team fan. He had a great quote afterwards: "Buy some time, let it fly." <laughs> and I, obviously, I, I buy that shirt. I like that. It's a great that. shirt. I like that. That's cool. So that was that was that was revealed, and then it also revealed that you know Matt Eberflus, that staff, that coaching staff, they're on the hot seat because they clearly have some talent. They've got some opportunity. They've got to win those kinds of games. That that was that you can't let that slip away. You cannot lose that game, and you've got to be able to stop the hail mary. What are you doing, defense? You got the knucklehead talking to the crowd. So that's the other thing that was revealed. You can't you can't brag about a win until you see. The, right, not even until you see zeros, because there were zeros on the clock until that final whistle blows. You got to play. You got to stay focused. You got to stay locked in. You can't be chirping with the fans. Come on, man. That was unacceptable. It's a tough thing. It's a tough look. Obviously, he put out the tweet to apologize. <laughs> Would love to know how his week is going, and I'm sure it's not going that great. Gosh. But yeah, the Hail Mary, it always feels like that we should be better at stopping Hail Marys than we are. Because these defensive, when when the backs are like batting it in the air, knocking it down, it just feels like that the offense has figured out some tricks and tips to stand in the right places to maybe make some things happen. I don't know. I just feel like we should, as defenses in the NFL, be a little bit better at stopping this. It's fun. It always reminds me of, uh, did you grow up playing the game Jackpot? Absolutely. Okay. So that, uh, yeah, that was a great game. So that's basically what it is. I don't even remember the rules, but you basically just throw it up and you try to snag it. And so yeah. it's fun. I always love those plays. And uh, Jim Nance got some love for his final call on that. The, the Washington radio broadcast was great. They went nuts. Um, so that was cool. That was, a, that was an exciting thing. So this topic today, we're, we're talking about revealing and what was revealed in week eight. And really every week in the NFL reveals something and, and 
Oftentimes, there are trends that, that continue to be revealed each week. But as we you know, build up toward the, the games each Sunday, you know, there, are, there are narratives, there are predictions, but ultimately, the truth is revealed. When they step out on the field, when we watch these games, we get to see the, the truth revealed about the players, about the coaches. Um, and so the coaches, you know, they reveal their game plan. <laughs> and we see players, you know, some of their mistakes are exposed. And, and really, the team's character is demonstrated when, when we, we tune in and, and watch. And so, you know, the best players stand out. And, and coaches who make good adjustments are on full display. And, and we also, as we watch, discover what teams are for real and have a chance to make the playoff, make a deep playoff run. And then it becomes evident which ones aren't ready. The Titans, the Giants, the Panthers, they are not ready. That is for sure. And so that's what was, that, that is what is continually revealed e- each week as we, uh, as we as NFL fans tune in. But as we transition to, to, to parallel this to our own life and, and specifically you know, our life as, as followers of Jesus, the, the question, you know, there's a couple different questions to consider today, but what is being revealed about our lives? When, when we live our lives, what, what does it reveal about what we believe, about who we are? And then how often are we diving into God's word And do we understand and know what God has revealed to us in his word and really through Jesus, through the life of Jesus, so much has been revealed. God's plan, God's God's plan for salvation, that the gospel has been revealed. And so do we know that? Do we understand that? And then are we living that out in a way that we are revealing that we believe that to be true? that our lives match up and, and, and reveal that, yes, I am a follower of Jesus. That is what I believe. I believe that God has revealed himself to me, and now I want to reveal that to the, to the world so that the world can see Christ in me shining through me. And so multiple, uh, multiple ways that, that we, can, we can go with this uh, today, uh, but, but as far as God revealing himself to the world, the first thing that we, we know that he's, he has revealed himself is through creation. Every day we wake up, especially this time of year, oh, baby, it's beautiful with the leaves falling and beautiful colors, and we know there's a creator. There's no doubt about it. And so Romans 1.20 says, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. And so as we, as we look at his creation, it should draw us to him, the creator, and, and to know him. And so we, we want to you know, have this desire to, to, to know him and, and say, God, reveal yourself to me in a personal way. And so have we experienced that from a, from a standpoint of, man, I, I, believe, I believe he's real. I, be, I believe that he is who he says he is. And then moving forward, do we continue to pursue him in a way that he continues to reveal himself and remind us of his love, that he reveals his love to us, that then he reveals his his specific plan to each of us as well. And and he's revealed his plan for the world and his his plan for us as followers of Jesus, but then also as we get to know him and, and, and he continues to reveal the next steps, the next steps for us to take in life. And so... This is the, the concept today, Brian, as, as we talk about God revealing himself and, and just kind of off the bat, what, what, what jumps out to you? Yeah, I think it speaks to the fact that God loves us so much that he wants to reveal himself to us. I, I believe that the whole story of the Bible is the story of God wanting to walk with people mm. and pursuing people to the point where he would even send his own son to die on the cross so that he could have a relationship and so that he could have life with us. And if you think about, I think in our cultural Christianity, Mm. it can be easy for us to take for granted that God loves us. But in the time when Jesus lived and then when the church was born, the fact that God loved people and wanted a relationship with individuals was such a radical concept. Mm. Because 
every belief system was that the gods were angry, that they were distant, that they needed to be appeased, or they would send a plague or send a famine. And so then you hear this message of God entering into human history and saying, he wants to have a relationship with you. Mm. And I think that's a beautiful thing that he has revealed himself, like you said, beautifully through creation, but he's also done it through his word and ultimately through Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let's jump into scripture that, that talks all about this. First John 4, 9, God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his one and only son into the world so that we might live through him. John 1, 18, no one has ever seen God, but the unique one who is himself God is near to the Father's heart. He has revealed God to us. So that, of course, is talking about Jesus. And then Ephesians 1, 9, and 10. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. And so God has revealed his plan. He sent Jesus because he loved us. Jesus went to the cross to pay the punishment for us. He rose again. He's, he's returned to the right hand of the Father, and he's coming back. He's coming back, and, and, and just as this, this verse says, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and, and on earth. And so we will be joined with him forever uh, in eternity. And so that's what's been revealed. And so do we believe that? And do we live, do we live that out? Yeah, I think oftentimes we think that our circumstances reveal how God feels about us. And so when things are going really well, we can start to think, okay, God loves me. He's for me. But then when we encounter trials, when we encounter difficulties, we can project that that believe that reveals that God is mad at us or angry at us. But the reality is that Romans 8 says that God did not spare his own son, but graciously gave him up for us all. How will he not also then graciously give us all things? Mm. So really God's love is not revealed through our circumstances. God's love is revealed through the cross. Amen. And it's revealed through the life of Jesus mm. who died for us mm. so that we could walk with him. Amen. I love it. I love it. No, it's great. And so yet yeah, now as we, we think about this truth and, and consider, all right, do we really believe this truth, the, the truth of Jesus and who he said he is and, 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 and what has been revealed in Scripture. So if we do, the question becomes, does our life reveal, what does our life reveal? I guess is the question. So, so let that, you know, ponder that question. What does my life reveal? Sometimes, if I'm honest, it reveals that I think it's all up to me. I think, oh, man, I got to do this. I got to do that. Sometimes it reveals that I, I'm still trying to earn God's favor or I'm trying to earn God's love by doing, by doing the right thing. And, oh, man, again, it's up to me. It's up to me. And, and sometimes it reveals that, that I'm not trusting him. My, 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 my choices or my, my attitude reveals that. And so we have to continue to, to, to kind of go back to, okay, how do I want to live my life? And, and what, what do I want it to, to reveal? And so when we reveal, when our life reveals that, all right, God loves me. I'm a child of God. I, I've been forgiven. I have surrendered my life to him. And so God's, God's love and light shine through me. Well, then it reveals that I've experienced a, a, a transformation in my life, that God has changed my life. It, it, it reveals that my greatest passion is him, knowing him and following him. And so my actions and behavior and, and, and mindsets are going to reflect that, right? It's going to reflect the, my beliefs. It's going to, it's going to reveal what, that my heart is aligned with him. And so that's the, that's the choice that we have. That's the challenge that we have uh, every day. Yeah, Bryce, what do you think about when you think about the question, what does my life reveal? What do you want your life to reveal? Mm. You're, are you asking? I'm me? asking you. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want I wanted to reveal that that God is real, that He is real in my life, that I know Him personally, and and that because He loves me, I'm able to love others, and because of His grace, I can live in in freedom, 
I can live with with a, a sense of peace and rest, knowing that my eternity is secure and anchored in the the the, the resurrection of Jesus. Um, so that's what I want my life to reveal. Yeah, that's great. I love that, and I think through unpacking it and through everything that you're doing, I believe it does reveal that. I'm encouraged by everything that you have going on here and all that God's doing through this ministry that's reaching so many people. Yeah, I think about the fact that I I, I hope that I know that I have received God's love and that God has loved me in so many different ways. And so I hope that my life reveals that I value people and that I care about people and I want the best for them. And I hope it reveals that I'm I'm desiring to do everything I can to serve them and walk with them wherever they are at mm. in that journey and in that process. Mm. You know, a lot of times um, I think that our words can reveal a lot about us. Yes. I think that our calendars can reveal a lot about us. Mm. And I think that our bank accounts can reveal a lot about us. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And... He said that where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And so when I think about some good ways to maybe evaluate what does my life reveal, I think listening to what you're saying and how you're saying it, and then also looking at what you're spending are two really good ways. I just got back from a a kind of a bros weekend, not like what you think maybe. Uh, My wife went on kind of a well-deserved a girls trip. She and her sisters went on a cruise. And so I had my four-year-old and my two-year-old the entire weekend. So I was on dad weekend. Wow. We branded it bros weekend. I love it. This is the first adult conversation I've had in <laughs> five, five days now, but I was convicted on Saturday, which was about three days ago, just how much of my words to my sons mm. were criticism or were don't do that, do this. And I was asking myself the question, like, how do they see me? Do they see me as someone that loves them and that believes the best in them? Or do they see me as just someone who's trying to constantly correct their behavior? Mm. And I had to evaluate, like, on Saturday, it was probably the latter. Mm. And it really challenged me to say, I, I want to be somebody that's speaking life into them and encouraging them and blessing them. Gosh. Wow, that's good. And that just, uh, I was just convicted as you're, you're speaking. Uh, <laughs> last night, I made the choice not to take the trash out. And so what does that reveal? Big deal. What, is that, what does that reveal? That reveals that I, I wasn't willing to serve my wife in that way, right? It's, like, it's those little things throughout the day. What does it reveal? What does it reveal? Man, my, I was selfish in that moment. That's what it revealed. It revealed I just wanted to go down to the basement and watch Monday Night Football and it revealed that I wasn't willing to, to sacrifice a few minutes just to walk outside and take the trash out from dinner. So well, it was really cold last night. Okay. Yeah, I right. just want to give you a, a, an out. Okay. I already had my robe on. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to go outside right now. Um, and so, but that reveals, but, but all these decisions, they reveal different things throughout our day. And so we have to continue to sort of catch ourselves. And, and ultimately as we spend time with God, he will reveal the areas of our life that, that are off track. And, and so he'll, he'll reveal the sin in our lives. But we've got to go to him and, and, and come before him in humility and say, God, reveal to me what, what, I, what I need to change. Re- reveal to me the, the, the ways that I, man, I just kind of blew it today. And so are we, are we in that, that kind of routine and process to, to do that? Um, and so it's hard to do because we, sometimes we don't like what's revealed. It's, it's, not, it's not good. But 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 we, but we rest in God's grace and, and we 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 turn to Him and say God I, I I did blow it today so we confess and we we acknowledge and agree with Him once those things are revealed and we and we experience that conviction, um, and then you know our our next action will also reveal you know how you know how we respond to Him and 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 His guidance and His uh His loving you know discipline as well to say all right. All right, God, I, I trust you. I believe in you. I'm going to make this change as I trust in you to help me make this change with your strength and power. So um, one other verse I wanted to mention as well is, as you were mentioning, you mentioned a couple of good verses talking about the heart and, and you know what our heart reveals. Very simply in Proverbs 27, 19, it says, as in water, face reflects face. So a man's heart reveals the man. 
And so our our heart, like we got to we got to continue to check our heart and and what is it revealing about who I am and what I believe and 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 what I'm all about and what's most important, what are my priorities? What what are what are my uh you know, passions? It, it all of it, all of it reveals it starts in it starts in the heart. And so are we aligning ourselves with God each day and is our greatest passion and our and our love for him driving our our life. Yeah, when when I think about the idea of the question that you asked which was so beautiful, what does our life reveal about us? I think about the word integrity. Mm. Um the the root word for integrity comes from a, a Latin word which is means an undivided or unbroken completeness or a state of being whole. Mm. So the idea of integrity is that you're whole, mm. that you don't have compartmentalized areas of your life mm. or that you don't have one way of acting in the world in a certain place and then another way of acting in the world in front of other people. I know there have been times in my life where I have lived a compartmentalized life or I had hidden things mm. and that steals so much energy, that steals so much joy and peace and passion from you. And I have also experienced what it feels like to have Jesus set you free. I've experienced the freedom that I don't have all of these things that I don't want someone to find out, or I'm not living in a web of lies or kind of trying to hide landmines in my life and kind of put them to the side. And, and there's such a freedom that comes from that, a freedom that comes from walking in integrity and walking in the light. And I think that's a, a challenge for us as we think about this idea, what does our life reveal? Does it reveal a life of integrity? Mm, that's a good challenge. Gosh, that's great. And yeah, I mean, what what are what what needs to be revealed in, in our life too? Like what do we need to reveal to to other people? And you mentioned the hidden sin. If 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 we're hiding stuff and, and trying to conceal things, whew, that, that needs to be revealed. That needs to be brought into the, the light. Um, and so, you know, I talk about the, the, the NFL <laughs> week eight. There were, there were weaknesses that were exposed. There were problems that were exposed. And so now those teams have to figure out how they, how they make the changes, how they, they make the adjustments. And if they just keep it as is, well, that says a lot about them. But, but for us, we, 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 It'll eventually come to light. That's the that's the other truth, that it'll eventually be revealed. And so, if we can be proactive to say, "All right, God, I, reveal to me the areas of my life," and then once those things are revealed, then even bringing it to you know other people that we trust to say, "Hey, I, I need help with this," and reveal it to them, man, then you can, with God's help, experience that freedom with with friends' help as well. Um, Man, those are those are those are important steps to take to experience healing, to experience freedom, but but it takes the step of revealing. Absolutely, and I think the best possible time to reveal is before we get caught or before something bites us in the butt. The best time for us to reveal is in the season where we're just struggling internally with something, mm. and that's why we need people around us who are trusted accountability partners, trusted brothers in Christ, sisters in Christ. One of the things that I try to do is when I'm struggling with a thought pattern, when I'm struggling with a desire that I know is not Christ-like, man, I want to confess it at the thought level, confess it at the desire level, mm. because there is a power of even revealing the struggles that we have. When we reveal the struggles that we have to people, when we reveal the doubts or the anger or the, 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 whatever, the temptations that we have, it loses its power. It's true. When it's inside of us, when it's in the dark, there's a power that can build and it can almost feel overwhelming. That's right. But when we bring it out into the light, when we allow ourselves to reveal it to other people, that's when we can get help from God and also help from people. Amen. Yeah. Because yeah, denying it doesn't, doesn't help. And so the, the Cowboys can continue to deny that they have <laughs> problems on defense or they can accept it and realize, wait, it has been revealed, so what are we going to do about it? And so um, that's the, the, the parallel for us as, as well. But, yeah, I, we got to acknowledge it, reveal it, and, and 
ask God for a for for direction on the on the path forward, um, and and continuing to trust and rely on Him. The last thing that we will uh, we'll almost have to save this topic for another time, but but the encouragement for us too today is continue to seek God, love Him, enjoy Him, fellowship with Him, and He will reveal His plan for us. The the next steps, and I I'm I'm in this place right now where I, I I need some I need some key direction right now and 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 so I want to enjoy him first and foremost versus just going to him for answers but I know that as I do rest in him and, and seek him he will reveal the answers to, to some of my questions and some of my you know concerns on on next steps that I that I need to take um, and so we have to get into his word we have to to determine all right do I do I trust him do I trust his word am I surrendered to him um, and do I trust that he will reveal in his timing as he sees fit the, the, the next step on the path, his will? Do I, do I desire to be in his will? All right, if I do, then, then I trust that he'll reveal what, what he wants me to do, when he wants me to go, where he wants me to go, those kinds of things. And so I hope that, that that's encouraging to somebody as, as well today. So, so good. This, this whole concept of revealing, there's a lot there. Um, but, uh, but fun to talk a little NFL and, and what, what was revealed in week eight. We'll know that other things are revealed in week nine. That's part of the season. Uh, but, but, and, and it's an ongoing thing in our own lives. We're always revealing. We're always revealing. Everything we do is, is demonstrating. Are we demonstrating real life change? Are we demonstrating God's love? And, and are we revealing, uh, all that, all that he is to us and, and, and what we truly believe. So a good good challenge for us today brian tremendous great to have you on man really appreciate it it's been a blast man thank you so much absolutely so glad to have him on i don't like someone having better hair than me but that's all right we'll give him that we'll give him the nod we'll give him the win brian gets the win in the studio today best hair so uh thank, appreciate that thanks for the love thankfully uh aaron i still got aaron beat don't i I got, the, I got Aaron beat. No, oh, he says no. Okay, so I'm third today. Fine, fair enough. Um, but thanks to Aaron. Great work out of him. Great stuff from Brian. I'm Bryce. I'm a sports fan who follows Jesus. I believe in the good news that he died on the cross for my sin. He was resurrected, and through faith, I've been saved by his grace. I hope that is true for you as well, and I hope you'll join me as we live life as sports fans who follow Jesus together. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you next time right here on the Unpacking It podcast.